Anand Gupta. So Anand is a full stack developer, technically that Credit Suisse, but based in Singapore, right? Which is pretty amazing because it's uh, it's already tomorrow there, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it's post midnight now. <laughs> right, exactly. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you are going to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you are going to talk to us uh, about, um, let's see, you are going to talk to us about uh, setting up feature flags with React, I believe. Uh, no, on the uh, GC routes. Wrong line. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the word. I think you'll do that way better than I do. Thank you so much, Anand, for joining. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Laura, for the uh, for the introduction. So, um, so today I would be talking uh, about um, um, a very important topic uh, in .NET, which is about memory management. And so, uh, as part of the topic is the GC roots. So, we'll try to address the question: Do you know your GC roots, uh, or do you know your roots? And obviously, I'm not referring to the root of your family tree. Uh, this is a uh, .NET talk, so it's all going to be about GC roots. Um, so there are a number of sources for GC roots. Um, some are quite well known, some are not so, and so that's what we are going to cover in this uh, in this talk. So let me just share my screen. Um, hope I can do that. Uh, can I confirm? You can see the screen. Cool, thank you. All right. Um, so the first one is the stacks, uh, stacks and registers. I think this is one of the most common ones that most of us are aware of um, because the, the stacks and registers are basically nothing but the local variables that we have in methods. So if you look at this method, there are a number of local variables here. Um, I think most of us can identify what those are. Um, uh, I have put some comments here for every line to indicate what the local variables, which local variables are considered as live by garbage collector. Um, so this is based on the release mode um, um, of, of our optimized code, basically. Uh, so based on that, we I have identified some of the variables here. I'll come back to this code, but before that, uh, we should first try to understand how does garbage collector actually know which variables, uh, local variables constitute live routes. So basically what garbage collector does is it goes to the JIT and says, can I have the GC info? And the JIT actually just comes and says, yes, this is, this is the GC info, here you go. So basically JIT is the one which is responsible for maintaining something called GC info, which is nothing but is a set of uh, registers or stack locations, uh, which, uh, which constitute the live routes uh, in a method. So the way JIT achieves this is when it JITs the method, um, it tries to uh, identify the register locations or the stack locations, which can constitute as a live route based on something called safe point. So, if, so every location where we are making a method call or a constructor invocation, those are called safe points. And it is at those safe points that uh, JIT records uh, which registers or stack locations are storing references to the objects, uh, which should be considered as live root. And safe points are also the points where uh, GC can occur. So GC cannot occur at ev at randomly at any point, uh, at any uh, line of statement in a method. So it can only happen at the safe point. So it is enough for GC to have a record of uh, the location, uh, the register and the stack locations um, at the safe points only. So now coming back to the method so that on the backdrop of this information, uh, let's look at this method again. Um, on the left-hand side, you see the method in C sharp and on, and on the right-hand side is basically the jitted code um, uh, that has been, uh, you know, uh, compiled by the just-in-time compiler. But this also includes the GC info. So I've highlighted the GC info uh, information in bold. 
So you see that there are some certain safe points here. So for example, when we look at the first line of statement, that's a constructor invocation. So that means that that's a safe point. But at this safe point, we do not have any local roots. And then when we move on to the next one, actually at this point, this is also a safe point, but at this point we have uh, a live root, which is the order repository object. So that's why if you see there's a plus RDI. So the plus RDI basically means it's uh, uh, GC, uh, the JIT is basically adding the RDI register as a live root at this point. So if GC occurs at this point, RDI will be considered as a live root and then it will perform its uh, DFS algorithm, depth, depth first search algorithm to uh, traverse to the object graph. Similarly, when we move on to the next line, again, at this point, we do not have live roots. The next one, uh, at this point, also at this point, actually, we do have a live root because orders object has been created and we are referring to orders object in the subsequent line. So which means that order should be considered a live root and that's indicated by plus RSI. So that's another register. Um, and then subsequently, there are no live roots and that's why we just see a safe point without any uh, mention of any register or a stack location. So this is how uh, the stacks or a register act as the roots of um, um, uh, as, as the live roots or the GC roots uh, for the consideration of the depth for search uh, by garbage collector. So that's the stacks and registers. The next one is GC handles. So there is this um, data structure called GC handle table, uh, which the CLR maintains. Um, and the GC handle table in turn maintains the data structure um, for various types of handles called strong, pinned, weak, and weak resurrected. So these are all in the unmanaged heap. So uh, we are not going to talk about weak and weak resurrected because those are not related uh, or do, they do not influence the lifetime of the objects. So these are more for monitoring of the lifetime of the objects. Uh, but we are going to cover strong and pinned because uh, these are actually going to the they actually influence the lifetime of the object. So which I'll just going to explain. So let's assume that there's an object. Um, so, so we have uh, a strong uh, handle in the GC handle table, which refers to an object called uh, object name D. Now uh, D in turn, uh, so, so D in turn may refer to, uh, <coughs> to D and K. So D in turn may refer to object E. Um, so this is how, uh, we are trying to ensure that object D is kept alive and in turn object E and object K are also kept alive uh, by the strong handle of the GC table. And similarly, when we have a pinned handle, so for example, in this case, pinned handle table is referring to object A and object J and then object uh, J in turn is referring to object C and object G. So this is the whole object graph that will be considered as live as a set of live objects because it starts from this uh, strong and the pin handle table. So the difference between strong and the pin handle table, um, or rather, let me first explain what a strong handle table is. A strong handle table, uh, strong handles are basically the handles which um, which ensure that objects are kept alive, but uh, and also they can be moved around or relocated as part of the compaction phase of the garbage collector process. But pin handle are the ones which uh, keep the object alive, but they cannot be moved around. So you cannot relocate uh, the object uh, during the compaction phase of the garbage collector. So that's the difference between strong and pin, but otherwise both do the same thing, which is they ensure that they have a reference to an object in the managed heap, so they themselves reside in unmanaged heap, but they have a reference to the managed heap. And that is how they ensure that uh, these objects are uh, always kept alive until they have been deallocated or dereferenced from the uh, GC handle table. So in C sharp code, this is how we may want to achieve this. So there is this GC handle class, uh, which has this method called alloc, and then you have to pass what kind of 
handle you want to create with that object. And that is how you can ensure that you can keep an object alive either as a strong handle or as a pinned handle. So that's GC handle. That's another source of uh, GC rules. So uh, sometimes it may not be obvious, but some of the libraries that we may be using can internally be using uh, this mechanism to keep certain objects uh, alive. Um, and the only way we can find this out is basically using the WinDBG tool um, and then look up the GC handles uh, using the uh, some of the commands that SOS um, uh, tool or library uh, provides us uh, to work with WinDBG. Um, this one, the static fields, I think this is another well-known um, source of uh, GC root. I think it's fairly obvious here that the uh, static field called employee uh, is a source of GC root. So when we create an employee object, say Peter, and then assign it to the static field called CEO. So this remains, uh, so the C CEO is basically, uh, Peter is now being kept alive because of the static field for CEO. Um, but that's, uh, so we understand this, but um, if you want to dig deeper and try to understand uh, where does the static field actually get allocated and, and how does it manifest itself as a source of GC root? Um, this is a little bit more involved in, um, but the good thing is that it's based on the GC handle table that we just discussed. So uh, there are a few things we have to keep in mind is, uh, first of all, the static, the the, the static uh, fields are basically, um, uh, you know, every it's basically at the app domain level. So every app domain has its own copy of static fields. Um, so that's number one. And number two is static fields could be of two types. It could either be of uh, the primitive value types like the uh, int, long, float, boolean, so and so forth. And it could also be of the reference type or even the struct type, which is actually boxed as a reference type. So uh, the uh, primitive type uh, static fields are actually allocated on the uh, domain heap at the high frequency heap part of the domain heap. Um, and there we have for every module, for per module, uh, we have a data structure that is maintained. And then within the data structure, uh, based on type, uh, all the fields are basically maintained. And then for the reference type, or uh, even the uh, struct type, which is basically boxed as a reference type, it is maintained through um, the object array. So there's an object array that is allocated on the large object heap. So the large object heap is the part of the heap where if the object is more than 64 kilobytes, the object is allocated in the large object heap. So that's where uh, this arrow is, this uh, object array is, is created and it is kept alive by the pinned handle, uh, by the pin as a pinned handle in the GC handle table. And this object array in turn has a reference to the actual uh, object um the the reference type of the object um uh, that is referred to as a static field so again in this case for every module and then for every module for every type we maintain this uh these these fields um as a reference type and so there is a two level of dereferencing that is required to basically uh reach that particular object um so this is uh the gc handle table uh, as a pinned handle allows us to have static uh, reference type variables um, fields uh, in .NET. And that's the source of uh, GC root. Um, then the next one is uh, this called cross generation assignment. So, so what does this mean? Um, so we know that uh, the way GC works is it first is using the mark and sweep algorithm or, or strategy. Um, and as part of its mark phase, it basically does a depth first search starting with the local routes. So um, let's assume that we have two known local routes X and Y, and uh, which could either be, you know, a stack or a register or a static or the GC handle that we discussed. And um, so basically it, 
does a depth first search starting from there and it just marks the objects uh, that are reachable and only those which are not reachable are considered as dead objects which is later on um, collected as a sweep process now the question is um, let's look at a naive implementation of how this might work so starting with object x uh, it will mark object a and object b and starting with object y it will mark object E, which means object D and object C. These two objects are actually being considered as dead objects. But if you look at it carefully, there's an object Q, which is part of an older generation, either job, uh, generation one or generation two, which is actually having a reference to an object D, which is in generation zero. So in, and because this is a gener generation zero collection, um, object Q will be considered as a live root, which means if it is a reference to object D, then object D should also be considered as a live root. But if we consider the naive implementation, that didn't happen. So how Anant, does- Anant, you have 30 seconds to finish. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so that means uh, uh, so that means we uh, uh, GC has to have a way to find out. So the way it does is it uses something called a card table. So every bit in the card table basically is maps to a range of uh, memory in heap. And uh, so every time, so let's suppose we create an object Q in generation two or generation one, and then later we create an object D and then we assign it to, ob to the uh, object Q. So this is where it uh, sets the card table bit, which marks the entire range as dirty. So later on, when the garbage collector process runs, it marks the objects B, E, and then it also looks at the dirty, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the memory range that is marked dirty and also considers that as a root. And that's how it completes, uh, it ensures that all the objects are being considered for garbage collection. The last one is the uh, F reachable queue. So we all know that a class uh, can be uh, can have a finalizer, and when that happens, and we can we create an object and reference is added to the finalization queue, um, and then uh, if it finds that there are certain objects that have been identified as dead objects, uh, it when it considers the finalization queue, it marks them as live, and then moves them to the F reachable queue. So effectively, we have turned dead objects to live objects, and that's why we are considering finalization queue as another source of GC roots. Later on, when the finalizer thread runs, it basically removes these references from F reachable queue, and uh, effectively, D, A, and E objects are now have survived the garbage collection, and they have actually moved to the higher generation. When the ne next garbage collection happens for the higher generation, that is when these objects will be collected by the garbage collector. Uh, so these are the resources. Uh, if you want to, uh, I have also put up uh, the slides as well. Um, you can reach out to me on Twitter or also follow me on my blog on Medium. Thank you. Well, thanks uh, Anant. Uh... I will do one thing, which is I'm going to enable everybody and everybody please uh, join me. Uh... <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Good. Great um, talk. I'd, I'd love to see, um, to see you record a video of that and maybe, you know, taking more time and going deeper because this is such a complex topic. So I, yep. I really, I'm really happy that you decided to tackle it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, we have now one minute for a quick switch and prepare for the next speaker.